Well, hello, this is Kelly, and I'm the Mathematic Plumber. And welcome to the final video in the Rainwater Leader series. Today we discuss the combined building drain and the combined building sewer. All plumbing code references will be from the National Plumbing Code of Canada, and I'm using the 2015 edition. A combined building drain is simply a drain that will carry sanitary sewage, as in the stuff that you would flush down a toilet, and mixes it with storm water or water that we get off the roof of a building. The plumbing code does have something to say about combined building drains. Clause 2461, part two, a combined building drain shall not be installed. There is, however, a note that we're supposed to check out, A21212. Note A21212 says, combined building drains may have proven acceptable on the basis of past performance in some localities and their acceptance under this code may be warranted. In short, installing combined building drains is prohibited, with the exception of some communities that will allow it. The only way to find out whether or not you're allowed to install a combined building drain, though, is to talk to the authority having jurisdiction. That would be the local plumbing inspector. Now let's look at this first example. We've got a building here with a flat roof, and it drains down 12,600 liters of rainwater through the rainwater leader. The rainwater leader comes down, turns into the storm building drain for a short length, and then it is met up with a soil away stack with eight fixture units draining through it. After that, it becomes the combined building drain. And one meter outside the building, it becomes the combined building sewer. Now, I'm not gonna take you through the sizing procedures for the rainwater leader or the storm building drain, because we've already done that at length in other videos. The rainwater leader will be five inches. That little section of storm building drain will be six inches. Our focus today is on how to size that combined building drain. We need to look into the code at clause 24105, conversion of fixed units into liters. Except as provided in sentence 24132, where the hydraulic load is to be expressed in liters, fixture units shall be converted as follows. A, when the number of fixed units is 260 or fewer, the load is 2,360 liters. And B, when the number of fixed units exceeds 260, the load is 9.1 liters for each fixture unit. Now in this example, our soil waste stack is only draining down eight fixture units. And if you remember that code clause, if I have 260 fixture units or less, I need to account for 2,360 liters that need to get added into the combined building drain. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So 12,600 liters plus 2,360 liters equals 14,960 liters draining into my combined building drain. Now it has a grade of 1 in 50, so I look to table 2,419. I look down the 1 in 50 column, and I come across at the correct liter load here, and it looks like I am 6 inches. Well, if you didn't notice it before, look at the title of table 24109. Not only is it for storm sewers, it's also for combined building sewers. This example is exactly like the last one, except for now we have 280 fixture units draining down that soil away stack. If you remember the last code clause, it says if you have more than 260 fixture units, you need to take that fixture unit value and multiply it by 9.1 liters per fixture unit. So let's do that. 280 fixture units times 9.1 equals 2,548 liters. So to size up that combined building drain, I need to take that 2,548 liters and add it to the rainwater liter, which is 12,600 liters. And I get 15,148 liters going through the combined building drain. And back into table 24109. And we are still grading at 1 in 50, so we will go down that column. And I come across and I find out, yes, 6 inch is still good for the combined building sewer. Well, we've made it to the end of the Rainwater Leader series. I hope this all makes sense, and I hope you have yourself a great day.